Welcome to a Stuart 10H steam engine build, part 5. Machining a groove in the piston to take a steam grade silicone o-ring. Checking the fit of the piston and rod. Removing the stub and fettling the connecting rod. Then cleaning off the paint and marking out blue from the parts. The piston, piston rod and crosshead have already been made. And in this clip I'm removing the crosshead from the piston rod so I can turn it round in the chuck to machine the groove for the o-ring. I'm going to fit the piston to the piston rod using Loctite 603. And in another video I will be drilling a couple of holes in the piston to take a pair of circlip pliers so I can screw the piston in and out of the crosshead. This next bit of the job has to be quick. I've applied the Loctite 603, screwed the rod into the piston and now the piston is in the chuck and I'm tightening the piston rod into the piston before the Loctite 603 sets. To protect the piston rod when using a pair of pliers it's a good idea to use a thin piece of brass but these small pliers don't seem to mark the metal at all. This is a bit confusing. In this clip I've turned the piston around in the chuck and it's now been held by the piston rod and I'm centre drilling the end. I'm using a very small centre drill and I'm not feeding it too far in. This will be sufficient to support the piston while I machine the groove. Without the life centre in place as shown here, this job could go very badly wrong. The life centre holds the piston very firmly against the chuck. So I can use the parting tool with confidence. This is a gun metal piston so the metal isn't very hard but it can jam up just as well as any other metal if you put too much pressure on with a parting tool. You may be wondering how deep do you make the groove? It has to be deeper than the diameter of the o-ring. How wide does it need to be? Just wide enough so it doesn't nip the o-ring and allows it to move freely. For any size of o-ring all the information you will ever need is accessible via Google. After machining the groove I'm removing the sharp edges with this square file. Which by the way has a handle so it's safe. These silicone o-rings are very strong but they're very easily cut by sharp edges. This o-ring is three quarters of an inch in diameter and fits perfectly in the cylinder which is three quarters of an inch in diameter. Where did I get the o-ring from? I got it from my box of o-rings. Frequently when I go to Blackgate's engineering I will buy some more o-rings for my stock, particularly the popular sizes used by Stuart engines which are three quarters of an inch and one inch usually. If for instance I didn't have a three quarters of an inch diameter o-ring then I couldn't do this job and it would be held up. My advice is if you need a couple of o-rings for a project buy six and that way you will never run out. Lubrication is vital and the correct type of lubrication is even more important. This is superheater steam oil and before fitting the ring I filled the groove with this stuff. It is vital when using silicone o-rings to use the correct type of oil. Motor oil, 3-in-1 oil or any sort of machine oil will affect the performance by making the ring swell. This will prematurely wear it out if it doesn't do any more damage than that. You must always use proper superheated steam oil for silicone rubber o-rings. And yes, I know I've just repeated myself because it's very important. Before fitting the piston to the cylinder to see if it works, I'm going to do a couple of things. The first job is to clean up the port face which is quite rusty. And to remove the rust as shown I use some 400 grade wet and dry sandpaper. The rest of the job takes place on my whetstone. Every workshop should have one of these. I'm using 3-in-1 oil as a lubricant and I'm rubbing the port face very carefully back and forth on the whetstone. The video of course is running at a high speed. I've been told from time to time by YouTube experts that when you're using a whetstone you should rub the part in a figure of eight motion like this. But I usually rub the port face on the whetstone transversely in the opposite direction to the way the valve moves. The valve will do the rest. The machining of this engine is really very good. The only problem is it's a bit dirty and rusty. So what I'm doing here is using a rotary scourer fitted to my Proxon motor tool to clean off the rust. 
I fitted the cylinder cover that has the gland machined into it to see if everything was smooth, and it was a little bit tight, but you would expect this as it's a new engine. I would congratulate the original machinist for making such a good job of this. It's really good. I'll try and finish the rest of the engine to the same standard. In the last episode, I bolted the sole plate down onto the box bed. Now I'm reversing that by removing it, and all the other parts I need out of the box that are dirty or painted will be cleaned up shortly. But first, there's a very important piece of machining yet to be done to the connecting rod. This stub on the end of it is for holding it in a chuck. But as the connecting rod is finished, it's not required anymore, so I'm going to part it off. This is a dicing with death method because it could go spectacularly wrong. So you could really, I suppose, saw it off with a hacksaw or a bandsaw and then clean it up on a one-inch belt sander. But in this case, for a change, I'm trying to be a machinist by parting off the bit that I don't want. Once again, this is a gunmetal part. The metal is soft, so you need to take fine cuts and have a delicate touch. Here's a component that I've just removed from the stub, and you can see what it is. It's the end of the connecting rod. And in amongst the parts in this clip is the crankshaft, and I'm not too happy about this. It was machined from the casting that came with the set, but it's not 100% true. I shall give this some thought and decide what to do. Do I use this or make another one? To clean off the old paint and marking out blue from the components, I'm going to use this stuff, standard cellulose thinners. Please read the instructions on the tin. This can be dangerous stuff. Please note, for this part of the video, I am working in a very well ventilated area. I'm using a good quality food container for this because sometimes if I have to leave the parts in overnight, I'll put the top on. And they're fairly airtight, not 100%, but airtight enough so that my house does not smell of cellulose thinners. But in this case, there was no point in fitting the lid because immediately the cellulose thinners contacted the metal parts, the paint just disappeared. And the marking out blue disappeared at an alarming rate. So that job was very easy. And that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.